This urban gardening course is going to mainly focus on the rules you need to know to contain a garden. That means you're growing and tending to your plants which are in pots rather than planting them straight into the ground. And this is because as a container gardener and an urban gardener, I know how little soil we've just got rolling around in the city to grow in. Container gardening is brilliant. It can be just as bountiful and as enjoyable as if you're lucky enough to have some flower beds. But there are certain things you need to know. And we're going to address these over the course of the next two lessons. The first is picking the right plants for your container garden. And the second is picking the right containers to put them in. Picking plants for your outdoor space might seem a bit daunting at first. There are so many varieties to choose from, and if you're a real beginner, it's impossible to know which are right for you. But there are a few useful things to think about that can help sort out the wheat from the chaff and work out which are the right ones. First things first, it's so essential to consider the natural environment that your space most closely matches. It might be a little challenging to think of that balcony on the side of a tower block resembling, say, a Mediterranean garden, but it's really how you're going to work out which plants are right for you. All plants are at home in different conditions. Some, for instance, are going to prefer loads of sunlight, whereas others like shady spots. Some really won't put up with wind at all, whereas others will be totally in their element. Whether your outdoor space is super bright or really sheltered, choosing plants that suit that space means that they're more likely to thrive. It gives you a head start even before you start gardening. It may sound obvious, but your outdoor plants are going to experience way more seasonal changes than their indoor friends. You know, you can have snow in April and a heat wave in the summer, all in the case of the same year, and your plants really have to put up with that. Plants deal with this by reacting to the situation around them. Some will only flower for a couple of months each year. Others will protect themselves by dropping their leaves and going into dormancy over winter. This also affects what you want to choose for your space because what your plants are doing at different times of the year will affect whether you want to put them in your garden or not. You might not want to admit it, but it's really important for you to think about how much effort you realistically want to put into your urban gardening. If you want to be a devoted everyday weekend gardener, that's cool, you can grow all sorts. But it doesn't mean that if you don't want to put in that much time, you can't have any plants. Safe to say, if you're growing in a town or a city, you're not really gonna have an awful lot of space. So that means you really want to make the most of what you've got. The best way to do that is to make sure that you have plants in your garden that will look full, beautiful and lovely for as long as possible, rather than something that looks spectacular for a few months in the summer, but kind of rubbish the rest of the time. So let's look at evergreen plants. These are ones that will look lively and gorgeous and full all year round. The slight downside is that they're not really big showies when it comes to giving out flowers. Seasonals, such as this one, can provide beautiful foliage and flowers, but sometimes just for only a little bit of the year. Annuals look great for a season or two, but then they will need replacing. You can see what I'm getting at here. Most gardens look best with a little bit of everything. Some reliable, hardy evergreens to provide structure and interest all year round, some seasonal and perennial plants to enjoy when they're at their best, and then annuals for a little bit of a shake up every year. The beauty of these is that you can swap and change them when you get bored and try something new too. And all these different types of plants are available on the Patch website. In our next lesson, we'll go over what you need to think about when you're choosing a pot or a plant of your plants.